Hi folks, thanks for joining me. Going to do a seven year review on the Kubota ZG2220 turn mower. So this is the last day that I'll be using this or the last day I've got this mower upgrading to one of the diesel Kubotas, the ZD1011. That'll be a totally different video, but this isn't going into all the specs of the ZG222. It's just going to go into what I see as the pros and cons. And I think after using this for seven years, I've got a pretty fair idea. So let's go, let's have a look and talk through this ZG220 turn mower. Okay, so let's start with the cons of this mower. There's not many, it, it has been an exceptional mower for me and I mow just under four acres with this. It can get quite rough at times, like bumpy, and there are you know a number of rocks and a number of tree roots as obstacles. So that'll give you a bit of an idea of what I'm contending with over seven years with this mower. Um, you might hear a bit of rain in the background of this video. As you can see just over here, it has been pouring. So the first con that I want to go in is with the front tyres. Now, these front tyres I have taken to a tyre specialist and he informs me that they do not have a bead on them. So eventually they are going to start developing slow leaks. So with this, it's at the point for me that I need to pump them up every time I mow. So I'll put them up to around about 40 PSI. That'll get me through hours of mowing, a day of mowing, and probably the next day it would need to be pumped up again. It's probably down to around about 20 PSI. And then the second day after I've pumped them up, they're going to be flat. So that's from a tyre specialist. They don't have a bead. The workarounds for this are to put an inner tube in it and that should solve all your problems. I haven't bothered with that. I've got an air compressor there, so I just pump them up before I use them. All right, second con is the chute that comes off the deck, the plastic chute. Like most lawn tractors, zero turns, these are pretty vulnerable. This seems to be um, one of those things that is a little more vulnerable on this than other machines that I've had. It, um, as you can see here, there's a couple of puncture marks on this and a couple of cracks and fractures. This is the second deck chute that I've had on this. So there you go. That is one of the sort of vulnerable parts. But like I said, this is quite common on most tractors. It just seems like this is a little more fragile than other brands. Right, now, the Third and final con on this is the parking brake switch. Now, the switch is housed up under the subframe and occasionally this will stick and you've just got to, how would you say, just tramp on the parking brake a few times and that'll free up the parking brake switch. Now, this is to be expected. This is seven years on this mower. There's a lot of clippings, mud, water, things like that have gone up under this deck and into the subframe, which can cause that um, parking brake switch to stick. So they are the three cons that I've found on this machine, which is barely nothing in the term, you know, in the scheme of things over seven years. That is pretty darn good. Let's get into the pros of this machine. Okay. Let's get into the pros of this machine. And the massive pro for me is that these machines are a shaft drive. They're not vulnerable to sticks and timber and bits and pieces getting up into transmission drive belts and damaging plastic pulleys and that that some other manufacturers have on their lawn tractors. So the shaft drive is a massive pro. Now, while we're talking about um drive belts the deck belt which is the only belt on this machine 
is a double thickness. It's not one of these thin ones. It is a double thickness deck belt. Now, on this machine, like I said, seven years, and I've just about to tick over 300 hours on this, it has never thrown a belt, which is pretty good going. So there is another pro on this machine. The deck belt is just bulletproof. I have changed it once in 300 hours. And yeah, to me, that was pretty good going. Pro number two, the deck. This is a manufactured deck. It is absolutely bulletproof. It is that thick, welded steel, manufactured. I've clicked into logs, tree roots, things like that with this, and it is up to the task. Absolute commercial quality, bulletproof. Okay, let's talk engine. Now, the engine is a Kubota gas engine, petrol engine. Um, apparently it's very similar to a Kohler engine. I think they might be um, rebadged or something like that. Very similar to a Kohler engine. Power-wise, fantastic. I've gone through like 12-inch thick grass with this. It's never stalled or anything like that. Yeah, you can hear it losing a bit of power at that um, sort of thickness. But if that's going to be a challenge for you, mowing that really thick high stuff, Cut it high first and then start dropping down the deck a couple of times to um, make up the difference. But there's plenty of power in this engine for, you know, fairly standard cutting, three, four, five, six inch grass, no problems. The power is really good. The reliability of this engine is very good. Never had a problem with it. Now, in terms of servicing, I've basically had the Kubota guys come out and do the servicing on this every 50 hours purely because they've got all the parts it saves me chasing them up and they know exactly what they're doing with the transmissions and things like that so it has been a really reliable transmission really reliable engine okay while we're talking engines let's um talk about fuel economy now this tank on this is about 27 litres capacity and basically, um, that would give me roughly four hours, maybe four and a half hours of mowing. So there you go. I think um, if you do the conversion with gallons, I think it's probably around about the six, seven gallon mark, looking at about four to four and a half, five hours of mowing on one tank. Let's talk accessibility to parts and for servicing and things like that. It is really easy to get access into the, the vital areas, so to speak, of this mower. There is a cowling that covers the back engine that can be flipped up, as you can see here. There is a tilt ability of the seat which will expose the transmission and drive shaft and stuff like that. And then there is a cowling in the footwell that will open up and allow you to access the gearbox on the deck. All right, um, one thing that sort of gets overlooked when we're talking about zero turns and lawn tractors and that is traction. Now. This has been really good traction wise. Um, in mud and that, it is quite good. But once the rear wheels, because they're obviously driving the machine and steering the machine, once they start filling up with mud in those treads, you're going to be starting to get challenged in terms of grip. So generally it's pretty good, but if you're working in a boggy, sort of muddy environment this is going to um need to wait for another day for that it is not a mud or a wet machine in terms of grip so yeah generally for most parts it's good but as soon as you start getting that slippery mossy muddy surface which is going to be the same with pretty much any machine you're going to find it a challenge to get the grip that you need so let's talk um, modifications. What have I done to this machine to make it better? 
basically nothing. The only modification, as I do with all my machines, is I have added a SeaTech comfort connector, which is basically a quick, a quick connect that allows you to just plug in your battery charger and easily disconnect it. So it's just called a SeaTech comfort connector. The leads basically go onto your battery and then you've got a clip on the end that'll just plug and unplug very easily onto your battery charger for winter and spare at times like that when you're not using a machine very often. That's the only modification that I've made to this machine. All right, let's talk seat comfort. It is a very comfortable seat. It is a very durable seat. Like I've said, I've owned brands of tractor and things like that, lawnmowers from other manufacturers, and their seats always seem a bit vulnerable to splitting. This has had no splitting, no issues whatsoever. It is very comfortable and it is very durable as well. All right, so there you have it. I don't want this video to get over complicated with specifications and we're going into bits and pieces. Just wanted to give you what I believe are the pros and cons of this machine after having used it continuously for seven years on maintaining just on four acres, just three and a half, four acres of property which is fairly, like I've said, fairly bumpy with a little bit of rocks and tree roots and things like that. So there you go. If you found this video helpful, it'd be awesome if you could give me a thumbs up. Even better, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.